Israel continued to disobey God. They had fallen into idol worship and neglected God's commandment to worship Him and Him alone. For this, God's punishment was heavy on Israel, and He gave them over into the hands of the Midianites. For seven years, Israel suffered terrible hardship under the oppression of the Midianites, who along with the Amalekites and people from the east plundered Israel's livestock and produce, leaving none for Israel's own use. The people complained to God, and He sent them a prophet to explain why this hardship was upon them. It was their sin and disobedience that had caused it. During that time, there was a young man named Gideon. He was beating out wheat in a wine press when the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Gideon wasn't feeling very brave or very happy. If the Lord is with us, then why do we suffer so much? And why are we being oppressed by the Midianites? The Lord then looked at Gideon and said, Go and deliver Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Gideon was in shock. How would he, a young man from the weakest clan of the tribe of Manasseh, be able to deliver Israel from the Midianites? The Lord replied by assuring Gideon that God would be with him. God was going to give him the strength to fight the Midianites, and he would give them victory. Gideon was in disbelief. If this indeed was true, he needed to make sure that God was going to pull through. He then proceeded to ask the angel of the Lord for a sign. If you will protect me and help me, then give me a sign and I will believe you. So Gideon went in to prepare a food offering to God. When he came out, the angel of the Lord told him to put the food on a rock and proceeded to touch the food with his staff. When that happened, fire sprung up and consumed the entire food offering. At that moment, the angel of the Lord vanished from Gideon's sight. God just showed Gideon a mighty sign. That night, God continued to work in Gideon's heart, preparing him for the big task ahead. He told Gideon to break down the statue of Baal his father built and cut down the Asherah next to it. These false gods were what got Israel in trouble. Israel was still foolish enough to believe that a wooden statue could actually help them instead of relying on the one true God. Gideon was still scared and needed more courage. He asked God for another sign. This time, he was going to lay a wool fleece outside. If, when he awoke, there was dew on the fleece, but none on the dry ground, he would be sure that God was with him. Just as Gideon asked, it happened. The next morning when he woke up, the fleece was wet and the ground around it and everywhere else was dry. God listened to Gideon's request and gave him a sign. But poor Gideon was still scared and needed more reassurance. Gideon then asked for a reversal of the first sign. This time, he asked God to make the ground wet but keep the fleece dry. And so it happened. The ground was wet and the fleece was dry. This time Gideon knew that God was really going to use him to save Israel from the Midianites. The next morning, Gideon and thousands of men assembled together, waiting on instructions from the Lord. The Lord knew that Gideon had to understand and see firsthand God's miraculous deliverance and victory. For this to happen, Gideon's army needed to be less in number. There were simply too many warriors. If they won, they would surely take credit for themselves and not give it to God. So God told Gideon to let all the men who were scared go home. Immediately, 22,000 of the 33,000 walked away. There were only 10,000 left, and this was too small a number to battle the Midianites. Gideon was confused, but continued to trust God. Then Gideon took the men to a stream of water. 
God told Gideon that all men who drank from the stream bent down like dogs should go home as well. Those who scooped up the water in their hand could stay. Out of the 10,000 remaining, only 300 men remained. There they went. Thousands of capable warriors left Gideon's army and only 300 remained. God really wanted to show Gideon that victory comes from the mighty power of God, not by the strength of men. That night, Gideon and his tiny little army looked down at the huge Midianite camp. Gideon trusted God, but the Midianites were so many. So God told Gideon to go down to their camp and spy on them. When he did, he returned filled with courage. The Lord once again strengthened his heart and Gideon was finally ready for battle. With his tiny army, Gideon launched the plan of attack. He gave each warrior one trumpet, one torch, and a jar to hide their torch. In the dark of night, they would stand on the mountains around the Midianite army. When Gideon blew his trumpet, it would be a sign for everyone else to blow theirs. Then they would break their jars and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon! They carried it out exactly as planned. When Gideon gave the signal, the 300 men blew on their trumpets and shattered their clay jars. The sound of shattering pottery echoed off the mountains, filling the valley below with the noise. The Midianites were awake, confused and scared. They looked up at the flickering torches all around them, heard the crashing sound of the breaking jars, the piercing blasts of the trumpets. They didn't know what to do. In their confusion, they grabbed their weapons and started running and fighting anyone and everyone, thinking they were battling Israel. It was a sight to behold. The confusion spread so rapidly that the Midianites ran away. Gideon and his 300 men army pursued them, and it was not long before they defeated the mighty Midianites. That day, God delivered the Midianites into the hands of Gideon. God's mighty power once again proved that he was the one true God and that he wanted to bless and protect his people. All Israel had to do was to put their trust in God and serve him alone.